Okay, so here we go. Here's my hand, a pocket pair, pocket sixes. Um, I'm going to set that right here again, as usual. So pocket six is not a bad starting hand. You should almost always try and just call them in the blind, you know, without raising with a small pocket pair to see the flop and see if you can hit a set. I'll go later into, like, certain strategies with different types of hands, you know, in some later videos. But most of the time, unless this is a big raise, you should always try and see a flop with this hand because if one six comes on the flop, it's very unsuspecting to anyone who's, you know, it's just one card on the table, you know. It's a lot better to have trips this way than if I have one six and two sixes come on the board. People know all it takes is one six for me to have trips. But in this case, both of them are disguised in my pocket hand. So as we see here, if I do the, the fake flop, uh, we're going to flop a set of sixes. So it's a rainbow board. The straight's possible, so you probably want to bet your set of sixes here in case someone has a hand like 10-5. They have an open end the straight. You don't want to make give them a free card. You want to make them pay to see the next card. Um, so three, four, six. I flopped a set of sixes. Now here's where the outs are different. People, what people, a lot of people don't realize who are just starting out, and it actually kind of took me a while to realize this too, is to make your full house, people think, oh, you can't improve this hand, all you have is three of a kind. you got to remember, hopefully most of you guys do know this, that the board's community, you know, the board can improve your hand. All you need out of the board is for the, if the board pairs, that improves your hand, because you went from, everybody plays the board, so you have three of a kind right there, and then if, the, if a three came, you would have a full house, because now you have three sixes, and a pair of threes. You play the board. So this is a much better situation to be in. If you flop a set, your odds are a little bit better to uh, make a full house by the river. And we'll show that now. Um, as I mentioned before, what was it? You have four outs times four after the flop, so there's a 16% chance with, if you have two offsuit cards and you flop a two pair, that you'll make your hand by the river. If you look at this right now, I have uh, two sixes and a six. Right now, my outs, there's three threes left and three fours left. So that's six outs right there. And just for this demonstration, we're going to include the case six as an out, even though it's not a full house. It wouldn't make me quads if another six came, but it's obviously going to make you the best hand. So we're going to include that in the out. So there's, if the board pairs, I'm going to have a full house. So there's three threes left, three fours left. That's six outs. Plus the case six is seven outs. And that's right now after, um, after the uh, flop. So for this hand, you want to analyze after the flop and after the turn. As I recommend for every hand actually doing that, the rule of four and rule of two, I pretty much break it down to the rule of two and the rule of two. I, you have to play Texas Hold'em by the card. as that'll You'll see that'll come more into play in the pot odds, which will probably be the next video I do, because I keep mentioning it a lot. And it's actually a pretty complicated subject, but it can help you make the basic you know uh, calls or races that seem difficult, but it can make it more logical and you can break it down in the mathematical sense to make make you feel like as long as you make the right mathematical decision really unless you have a strong read on somebody that they're you know they're blinking fast or they might you might think they're bluffing for some reason or they're uncomfortable you know they're biting their lips whatever whatever your read may be you know mathematically your fold would be justified because you your chances to call that bet are not worth the risk to put in and win that pot so we'll get into that uh, probably next video I promise um, so here we have seven outs times four if we just if we analyze that, which we don't want to do in this situation, I'll tell you why that's wrong. It's 28% because our odds will actually increase. Our odds are going to be better than 28% because, as you see, since we already have three of a kind, all we need is the board to pair. So why I like to do the rule of two and rule of two, got to analyze by cards. Like I said, seven outs, just multiply it by two. You have 14% chance to hit your – either hit the K6, the, uh, a three, or a four by the next card. That's not by the flop. Remember, it's 14% it's lower than 16%. But remember, 16% was – after all the cards, so just watch here. So look at what happens here. Here I here I ended up getting the full house right now. I'm going to show a different situation here in a sec. So here I made the full house. I have three sixes and a pair of fours. So my full house was made. I hit it on that card. I only had a 14% chance, which is, you know, uh, just above one in seven. So say we did something else. Say we saved that card for last, right? Let's just say we threw this card in there instead. A seven would work. Um, First of all, it's a really dangerous card for our sixes because if somebody called you with like 10-5, they made their open-ended straight. So the only reason you're staying in this pot, most likely if someone's betting heavy, is in hopes, if you're calling a bet, that the board pair is on the river. Because if they're betting heavy, 9 out of 10 times, they're going to have that 5, and they're going to have a 3 through 7 straight. So let's say the board came like that. This is where your odds multiply. Again, you still have the 7 from before. You can still get the K6, 3 threes left, 3 fours, 7 outs. Now you have an additional three outs because that card can pair as well. So your outs go up to ten now. Rule of 
rule of four and two, in this case just do two, obviously 10 times two, 20% that I'll, uh, I'll hit my hand. So again, the numbers are smaller if you do it card by card. Just to compare, for this, it's 14% after the flop to hit your card on the turn, and it's 20% after the turn to hit your card on the river. So just to compare that to the other one, if you do the other one card by card, if you have a two pair, both times you have four outs on each card to hit it. So you have four outs twice, basically. So your chance to hit it on each card is four times two is 8% on the turn and 8% on the river. So you can see by this, it's much better. This one's 14% on the turn and 20% on the river. So your odds are much, much better. These are, these are estimated odds, again, 20%. It's, it's pretty accurate if you just do the math yourself. If you, see, you have four cards, you have two cards here, there's six known cards, there's 46 unknown, you know 10 make your hand. So that's, what, 10 divided by 46. It's just above, just above 20%, really. So I think it's like 22. But again, fairly accurate. So I don't, I don't want to go against everything I said to this point about doing the rule of four and rule of two. But really what I do, and the better way to do it, is to do analyze by cards. You should just be multiplying your outs by two each time. That'll probably make it easier for you guys. I don't mean to confuse you. I know I started out the video as four and two. But the, the four comes in play that after the flop, before this seven is known, two cards left. That's your percentage of making your hand by the river. So either on the turn or on the river. That includes both cards. So, But if you want to analyze bet per bet, because you bet after every street and every card. A street is just the flop is third street, the turn is fourth street, the river is fifth street. So, you know, the fourth and fifth card. Um, so, you have, especially for when you have a, a full house possibility like this, you have to go card by card. Because as I just showed you, your outs increase from seven to ten to improve your hand to make, you know, either your full house or if you hit the case six quads. So you really want to analyze uh, card by card, like I said. So that's your chances of making full house. Um, and I threw in your slight chances of making quads. If you want to just analyze it yourself, it's very easy. You know if this is the same flop, what's the chance of, say, this card was now making your six by the river. You There's one six left in the deck. You'd multiply that by two. So there's 2% on each card. So your chances to make 4% that the six will show up in the next uh, two cards, so one out of 25 times you'll get quads in this situation, um, and it's 2% for each card, so again, all estimated, but very, very close, pretty much all within a percent, and it's very simple math that you have time to do, even if you're playing amongst friends, you know, like, uh, friends don't like to sit around forever, you know, and the pros, if you ever watch the video, they, they make, you know, some five, six, seven minute decisions where they're sitting there replaying the whole hand in their head, you know, and with their friends, you can do the simple math if it's... <laughs> As long as you have an IQ above 40, you know, you can do it in 10, 15 seconds, and no one's going to get upset at you for, you know, thinking, especially if a large amount's being thrown in the pot, which it probably will be if you're staying in the hand and somebody's betting. You have a set that's a very good hand, possibility of a full house, so might be a lot of chips going in, and uh, could be a lot of money won for you. So that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, next one, as I mentioned for the 17th time, will be pot odds, which is a very important concept that a lot of people don't know in Texas Hold'em but it makes your decision to call a, a bet proportionate to the pot. It's a risk versus reward type of uh, equation, and it makes uh, your poker, your play, a lot more mathematical. So, uh, And you can, you can play however you want. You can play loose tight, but at the end of the day, as long as you make the right mathematical decision, again, like I said, unless you have a read on someone that they're bluffing or that they have a very strong hand that you're not going to beat, you're going to come out in the positive profit, and you're going to maximize your profit over time in uh, Texas Hold'em. So... Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more.